Good morning. I'm Rowena Crosby. And I'm Deborah Renner, and we're your co-hosts for this show. Thank you for joining us for the next 17 minutes for Your Invisible Toolbox. The show is based on the book, Your Invisible Toolbox, that Ro and I co-authored, and each week we look at a tool that's essential for working effectively with others. We welcome you to today's pre-recorded show. Have you ever tried to change a habit? <laughs> I think we all have, and it's challenging to change it and then challenging to make it stick. That's what we're going to explore in our program today. And if you'd like to be perceived as confident, credible, and competent in every situation, well, stick around for our development challenge because we have some tools that will allow that to happen. And make sure to have a pen and a paper or a device that you can jot some things down during that session. And in our story time segment of the program, we're going to share with you some stories that graduates of Tarot Workshops have shared with us that relate to our topic today. And each week this show does focus on the book, Your Invisible Toolbox, and today we are going to be in Chapter 33, Don't Assume a Fig. And if you don't have a copy of the book, it is available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, and you can get it in a hardback, paperback, and a Kindle edition. So let's get started. Neuro Linguistic Programming, or NLP, that sounds like a daunting field of science that yeah. would be hard for us ordinary business people to get our heads around. Actually, it's a relatively straightforward method of just paying attention to the verbal and nonverbal messages that we send. Well, at Tarot, we like to remind people that the only message that matters is the message that's received. It doesn't matter what we intend to say. It doesn't actually even matter what we say. What matters is what people perceive us as saying. And a lot of our message is delivered through our nonverbals. It really is. And so to relate better to others and build trusting relationships, it does help to get a grasp on some of the principles of NLP. And like anything, when we're trying to acquire some new knowledge, it takes a little bit of practice, actually a lot of practice. What you might discover is some of the messages that you're sending non-verbally aren't aligned with your goals. So let's look at our invisible tool of the week. It is in chapter 33, Don't Assume a Fig. And what's the tool, Rob? And the tool is to open your posture. Okay. Well, if there were a way we could immediately instill trust, boost people's perception of our confidence and our competence, it would cost us nothing, and we could employ it wherever we wanted to, whenever we chose, would that be worth a little time? It would be for me. It would be for all of us, <laughs> something that doesn't cost money and can help us reach our goals. As we mentioned in the introduction, one branch of neuro-linguistic programming is the messages that we send non-verbally. We message all day long through NLP, and what this has shown is that people look for and trust symmetry. That gives us some insight yeah. into our own messages, and people tend to distrust imbalance. And so a symmetrical posture that actually triggers that trust in someone else is when we have our arms at our sides. And we might lift our arms to gesture, but our arms stay open, and that's the symmetrical posture that's going to trigger trust. And since it's not comfortable, we don't naturally fall into symmetrical stances. Most interactions with other people do involve a little bit of tension, and so then we end up doing some other things with our body language to protect ourselves. And for our own comfort, one of the most common ones is the fig leaf. You've seen people, the photo op, the hands go here. Yes, very protective. <laughs> protecting the lower belly. And this is not effective. It's actually for the comfort of the person, but it's not communicating that confidence. Yes, and if you wonder about this, the next time you're watching a television program with the red carpet, oh, yeah. watch those highly trained professionals and the actors. You'll rarely see a fig leaf. Even though they're probably experiencing some anxiety, think of all the cameras and all the audience and all their talented peers. But they're not just relying on that fancy designer outfit. They're letting their stance and their body posture communicate for them. And we're not actors necessarily selling our persona, but every day we are selling our expertise, our credibility, yes. trying to sell our ideas, get them listened to, and it's going to be those nonverbals that are going to carry that message. In fact, there was a study done at MIT and it could predict the outcomes of interactions such as job interviews, dating, and negotiation just based on what they saw non-verbally in the interaction. And with an accuracy, I think, of 80%. 80%. Really astonishing. Well, this is the segment of the program we call Your Development Challenge. This is where we challenge you to challenge yourself and try something new. So we asked you to have a pen and paper or a device. We want you to jot down 
five words that would describe how you would like people to perceive you. So take a few moments. So most of us we want to write we want to be perceived as professional credible <laughs> most of us do and yet if we're actually really honest with ourselves that's not exactly what always comes up there might be other words in which people would use to perceive us and other times we're actually frustrated because we we know we're giving off messages and the messages aren't communicating our core credibility or competence. Exactly, and since 93% of the impact we have in face-to-face -face communications comes through nonverbal <laughs> messaging, and more than half of that comes from the visual messages we send, it really does make sense to evaluate the messages we're sending and how that's being received by others. So one of them might be slouchy. It, when we see people slouch, they're less noticeable, and they actually appear smaller and that's not going to give a message along with our words of confidence. Exactly. And we, another thing we know about anxious people is they do communicate tension through their body language. So they're moving often with jerky motions, whereas a confident person is still and looks like they plan to stay. Or someone while they're talking who's dancing or tapping with their foot or maybe with their hand on a table. Yes. And even if we are feeling competent and capable, we can still have that anxiety in the face-to-face -face communications and that causes us to slip into some of these natural stances that aren't communicating for us. So what's the solution? Well, there is one. It's to get into a balanced stance, balance your weight, an equal 50-50 distribution, your feet about shoulder width apart, and weight on the balls of your foot. Athletes will recognize this because this is the ready position. And this really communicates to people you have no fear of attack that you're standing there <laughs> open and it actually has a big effect on how people will perceive you but the interesting thing is it has effect on us when we use it we get more oxygen to the brain and that is helpful yeah so it's a win-win all the way around it is. well what about when you're seated in a meeting when you're sitting you still want to sit tall maybe lean a little back in your chair hands should be in your lap on the arms of the chair or even better keep them tabletop where people can see them and head up, chin level when can be, and not a lot of nodding. That can communicate some nervousness. And what about hands and arms? We tend to clasp our hands together when we get a little nervous. You've all seen it and you've all experienced it. That can be a sign of nervousness or anxiety. So to communicate confidence, allow your hands and arms to be still unless you're gesturing. And if you can have those hands tabletop, as Ro talked about, or have those hands evident, rather than in a pocket or behind your back, you can show the palms of your hands. That's the most trustworthy thing you can show. You don't want to do jazz hands, but you want to use those <laughs> palms in your gestures. And we know when we tend to feel a little bit intimidated, we can get defensive. And that's when we start covering up vulnerable areas like the neck. We drop the chin or cover it up. We cover up the groin. We cover up the core organs and that all communicates nervousness and protectiveness whereas a confident person isn't feeling attacked and so they assume an open stance. You've seen this one before. This yes, is a, that's a common one. Yeah, clearly a core move to protect that core and actually people do it when they're cold but look what that might communicate. It's a barrier between ourselves and those that we're communicating with. Yes, now here's the rub. Confident people appear natural. But when we're first learning to do this, we look like we're trying to manage our bodies, and we are. So the development challenge is to really challenge yourself to be able to get into these postures often enough that it rewires the brain in a way that that becomes natural for you. Well, here's the plus side. Once that brain is rewired, you won't be able to go back to the old way. It will not feel comfortable, so it completely shifts. And we hear that from tarot training we professionals. Do. Once they master the new way, they just can't stand in some of these <laughs> other stances. Now, there is a caution, and that's to make sure that you look confident and not arrogant. Arrogant people tend to, tend to take up space that belongs to other people. So think about on the subway when people spread out or these kind of stances, that can communicate arrogance. A confident stance is one that takes up your own personal space while really respecting the space requirements of others. So our development challenge this week to you is to challenge your posture and take this open pose. It's not gonna feel comfortable, but we want you to try it and use it in any situation you can. Standing in the grocery line, just waiting for the kids, whatever it is, strike that open posture, you'll actually find over time, it will become comfortable and it'll be uncomfortable to go back to those closed poses. Hard to imagine at the beginning, but it's true. 
Well, this is the segment of the program we call Storytime, and we get to share with you some stories we've heard from tarot graduates that relate to our topic. And one actually <laughs> does relate to this. How many of our graduates have talked about mastering this stance by standing in the line at the grocery store or on the side of the soccer field or just in ordinary interactions just to make it natural. We did a promo video and if you saw it, you were introduced to a really popular YouTube video right now called The Backward Bicycle. And this video was introduced to us by a group of leaders that were here last week working on leadership at Tarot. Yes, and the program was actually Myers-Briggs where we were taking a look at how to bring out the best in self and others through understanding our natural preferences. and. One of the leaders in the workshop was reminded of this backward bicycle video. We are so delighted she shared it with us because we wanted to share it with you. <laughs> and in the video, an engineer attempts to ride a bike that's actually been retooled by welders to be different, to be backwards. And so when he went to turn left, it would turn right. When he went to turn right, it would turn left. And it was just so fun to watch this. Riding the bicycle was almost an impossible task because of how he had to learn to ride a traditional bike. And the engineer really decided to stick with this. So what he did is made a commitment every day to try this new technique. Took him eight months, but after eight months, he was able to ride the backward bicycle confidently enough that he didn't crash and he could go at a reasonable <laughs> speed. Well, there are two amazing insights from this video and the first is that once the engineer learned to ride the backward bicycle going back to the old way of riding the traditional bike was really challenging it's, for him. It's hilarious to watch on the video. He actually had to relearn how to ride the bike and you know people often say you never forget how to ride a bike. Well yes you do if you learn to ride it backwards. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the second insight is that the engineer had his young son also try to learn the backwards bicycle and the little person as you can imagine actually picked it up in a few weeks instead of in eight months. And this reminds us that young people actually have a little bit more neuroplasticity and are able to acquire skills more quickly. If you're introducing your young people to a foreign language, do it before age seven. They say we won't learn a foreign language as a native would speak it if we're not introduced to it by that age. That goes to a lot of things, music and other things yes. when they're young. If you haven't seen the video yet, please in click the link below. It is so enjoyable. Yes, eight minutes is really worth a watch. <laughs> Another story that was shared by a tarot graduate actually gives us hope if we are fully grown is change possible at this age. <laughs> and it's about seatbelts in cars. Yes, and when many of us grew up, there were no seatbelts, so it wasn't even an option to buckle up. Exactly, and so seatbelts often weren't even in cars. Yes. When it became a law, and all, seat, all cars had seatbelts, and then they installed those features w that would beep when you didn't have the seatbelt fastened, a lot of people would fasten the seatbelt behind them so that the beeping would stop, but they didn't have to wear the seatbelt. It was that difficult of a habit to change, to really just go ahead and buckle up. Yes, and so our story is about a young man who would go out to his father's farm on the weekends. He was driving his own truck. His dad would get into the passenger seat, and his dad wasn't wearing a seatbelt, but in his own vehicle, he insisted his father wear the seatbelt, and so he begrudgingly did that. You can imagine the father complained. This went on week after week after week. There weren't any specific goals to change a habit. It was just something he insisted on in his own vehicle. But he was astonished when he went to his father's. A couple months later, he got into his dad's truck, and he watched his dad buckle his seatbelt without having to say anything. And he turned to his dad and said, Dad, you buckled up. And he said, I can't go back. I changed that habit. And that is how habits change. That is how habits change. And that gives us all great hope that we can change some habits and we can take mastery of things like our body language and retool the brain. <laughs> Well, those of you who follow Tarot on social media already know that we post several times every day useful links to interpersonal skills topics. We're going to feature two of them today. And our first featured post is to Tarot's flagship training program called Impact, How to Speak Your Way to Success. In this two-day workshop, participants are introduced to 12 specific tools that help them communicate more effectively non-verbally. There is no faster way to get those tools than to take that two-day workshop. That is That's the truth. Amazing. So that'll be on all Tarot social media platforms today. And our second featured post is to a blog by Daniel D. Piazza. It was published in the Huffington Post. It's, a, it's titled Communication Lessons Learned from a Con Artist. And the author is not encouraging people to <laughs> con people or to be con artists, but shares the skills that will allow them to succeed in their trade. And interestingly, 
those are many of the same skills that are the nonverbal things that we communicate. And our invisible tool of the week is included it as is well. among them. Yes, this is going to be posted on all Tarot social media platforms on Wednesday. Well, thank you for joining us today. If you missed any portion of the program or want to share it with others, you'll find the entire program loaded up to Tarot's YouTube channel. Join us again next Monday morning at 9.03 Central, where we will examine another invisible tool in your invisible toolbox. And now it's your turn. We welcome your ideas and suggestions for future shows. Email your ideas to ideas at yourinvisibletoolbox.com. Find us out there on your favorite social media platform. We're also on Instagram. And if you haven't subscribed to Tarot's YouTube channel, click the link below and you'll be subscribed and alerted to when future shows are going to air. A thank you to Kyle Plummer, our director and cameraman, and Rachel Trainum for helping us with this production today. And thanks to all of you for joining us. And that's a wrap.